How's it going? So, um, it's snowing out there again, guys. I've spent a pretty decent portion of my adult life doing snow removal every winter. And that's all fine and dandy until you have to leave the truck. Well, today, I'm gonna make sure I don't even have to leave the house. Look at this freaking snowblower! By some kind of a post-Christmas miracle, I got this snowblower off of Facebook for 250 bucks. Score! So we're gonna take this thing apart and make it remote controlled. I almost feel bad doing that because it was such a good deal, but I guess I wouldn't want to do that to a $2,000 one, so. Hey, step one to this whole process. I'm going to remove the engine first, and then we can see exactly what systems we have already for uh, moving the tracks, starting the auger, all that good stuff, and how we can hijack that for our own use. Look at that little cutie! So, this is what's going on under the machine. The tracks are paired together through this axle. So there's no way to do tank steering as is. The way that the rotation from the engine is transferred to the tracks is through this interesting little thing here. So we've just got this plate, which is directly hooked to the engine through a pulley. When we pull the lever to make it go, this plate gets pushed up against this little rubber thingy and it turns the tracks. And then it's harder to see down here when the blower is turned on, there's a little pad that gets lifted and a uh, idler pulley gets pressed into the belt. So the belt is just slipping on the engine when that's off. I think I've got a game plan for all of this. So we don't have that much space to mess with the transmission of this thing. And to make the tracks still engine driven is a heck of an engineering problem that I definitely won't be able to tackle in the two days until it starts snowing. So, I'm thinking screw it. What we're gonna do to make this work, we'll drive the thing electronically with some wheelchair motors. So I'm gonna start by removing the transmission and all the drive components for the tracks. Life hack! If you wanna save time and hold yourself accountable to finish the project, Use a grinder instead of a wrench to take things apart. Then you can't go back. The hell is holding this thing? Oh, it's welded. Welded and bolted. That's a strange choice, Sears. Yeah, that's a little easier access. I think I just figured out the transmission and it's freaking genius. So this is the bar that the transmission switches around. So when we go into low gear, we're closer to the center of the circle, so it turns slower. High gear, we're all the way out on the edge, and then reverse, we go to the opposite side. That's so smart. I almost feel bad ravaging this thing. Say goodbye, cool transmission. Okay, I think that's all the bits out that I wanted out. That was pretty rough. Now then, these are the motors that we're gonna use to drive this thing. There we go. Now we can install a sprocket gear on there. And I, uh, may I add a very expensive sprocket gear. I should have just kept this out on the plasma cutter, but whatever, I got them now. So we're gonna use them. One problem though, I thought it was supposed to be like a press fit. I, I don't know if we're supposed to weld this or what. I, I guess I'm gonna try and weld it. I didn't have another collet that was the right size at the store, so I had to lathe this one. Let me tell you, that was rough, man. This is some kind of hardened something, but totally worth it for that QA. I, I'm too impatient to cut QAs with a file and I don't have a machine for it. No! Oh, fuck! What have I done? Nothing we can do about it now. I'm gonna try and weld this thing back together. I've taken all the grease out of it. Ah. Cross your fingers. Yeah, that's not going in very well. It's definitely some weird type of casting. 
is uh huh 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 go. Let's hope that a hundred bad weld equals one okay weld. I'm calling that done, uh, less out of confidence in the repair and more out of necessity. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the best we get today. Damn it. Now, before we try and stick this guy back on, um... Problem solved. Wow, so much easier. Could have saved myself two hours if I just did that. Okay, we can move forward now. So, we've got our little sprockety boy on there. That's all good and tightened up-ish. Now we gotta mount this thing onto the snowblower. And these are the only tapped holes besides the ones to hold the case open. So I made this part, which goes like that. We just stick this little bracket onto our motor. I've gone and cut these little slots into the body of the snowblower. And those we can use to attach our little motor bracket. And using the slots is how we can put tension on the chain. So, with that all built, before I get it all the way installed, let's figure out how we're gonna put these tracks on. The tracks are installed using these bushings. And there's really nothing keeping the bushings from pushing their way out. So, my uh, first uh, half-ass idea, just pop a little bead of solder on there. Uh, the solder's not actually gonna bond to the steel, but it does create kind of a lip that is gonna be difficult to pull out. So I, I think that'll work fine. It's fine. I didn't think this through all the way. The motors aren't gonna fit here because this is where the tracks go. Stupid. So I made these little plates to extend them backwards. All right, here's how it's gonna go together. First, we can pop a little track on there. And then, to hold it in place, got a shaft collar. Then, we install our little sprockety guy. And now, we just gotta figure out our chain length. Sorry, that was raw. That, that looked decent enough. All right, I put the tracks on the correct sides. I wired these things together and here we go. It pops wheelie, but it does have the power to move this thing. So, that's pretty cool. Whoa! All right, you get the point. Oh man, I better hurry the hell up. Anyway, that worked pretty good. They were flopping around a bit, so I added this support in here. But otherwise, I think they'll work as is. Now, I did want to keep working on other facets of the machine before stiffening this up, just so we have room to work. But honestly, the snow's fallen. I'm gonna skip a couple of the features that I planned. I tend to uh, be a little overambitious with what I want to do. So, let's stiffen this thing up, get a place to put the battery, and a box where the electronics can go. And we're basically gonna rough out the working machine and then we'll make it look pretty. Or we won't, we'll see. I put the engine back where it's gotta sit. That leaves just enough room for the battery right there. Then we got room here to hold all the electronics. Yeah, it's, it's not terrible. I guess let's start with a place to put the battery. Oh, I need some angle iron, but I don't wanna go back in that hell hole again. Our battery just slides right in there. The problem with this, it's a little back heavy. So to fix that, I've got a little caster on a post. Beautiful. Oh, look at there. What did I just say? Look at that. No more tippy tippy. Now then we gotta make it so this bar isn't flapping around in the breeze so much. And we're just gonna do that with the plate. It's not gonna have to spin too freely, so we can get away with it. I don't know what's wrong with my welder, but it's hard to get a bead going. That's okay. Now, we're gonna go right ahead and weld a little bar to this guy. And this little bar is so that we can engage the snow sucker thrower thingy. 
No. Yeah, I, I think that'll work just fine. Now we just need a way to lock it in place. Hmm. This was not a part of the plan, but here's what I'm doing. I'm putting a linear actuator here, and we're gonna use that to activate and deactivate the, what the hell do you call that thing? The auger. I don't know, I, I just don't like the idea of just clipping it into something. That feels so jank. Not that this isn't gonna be janky. Shut up, I'm doing it. First, pop a little bolt on here. And then stick that guy on. And we can weld our little feet. This guy goes. Yeah. This guy goes. Yeah. Look at that. It dodges everything. Looky there. I think this is going to work. Hey. That's pretty good. Pop a nut on there and call that a job well done. Next, I guess we can deal with the bar I just cut. So, we're gonna replace the drive mechanism that was already here. I went ahead and printed these parts out of cardboard first to make sure everything fits. But I've got a big old spur gear here. This bracket just holds a windshield wiper motor. That looks pretty good. And the wiper motor, just another spur gear that'll just get pressed on there. And this will mount to the underside of that, right there. And honestly, that seems like it's just perfect. Now we call upon Shop Jesus to bestow a miracle upon us, to turn cardboard into steel. Wow, thanks Shop Jesus. Guess we just gotta weld these in place. Can we just take a second and appreciate this quality gear that I made, or that Shop Jesus made on the plasma tether. That thing's kind of kicking ass now. I think. Anyway, this can just be zapped onto there. Okay. It should work. Wow, look at that thing go. We have 360 degrees of motion now. Baller. One final piece for this thing is we're gonna install an electrical enclosure right here. Oh, hi Stella. Hope you decided to join us. The heck are you doing in here? Huh? Not a sponsor. Anyway, box. Now, all we gotta do is the electronics. The electronics for this build are pretty dang simple. We read the analog signals from the controller using an Arduino and write that information to an H-Bridge motor driver for each motor. And I, I mean, but that's it. <laughs> Easy peasy. Here goes nothing. As you can see, it works. The drive is not great. Well, I, I don't know. I think it will work, but it's gonna be slow and hellish, and you know, if it's that terrible, I might as well just freaking do it by hand. Now, let's see if we can mess with it. I think the biggest problem is that these motors want 24 volts rather than just 12, so I don't know. I don't have another deep cycle. I guess I could steal the deep cycle from the trailer. So, um, this new battery seems to work better than the old one. Screw it. I'm, I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to take it as a win. So I'm going to go right ahead and install the engine. And we can give this thing its first test. I don't think it'll be the last test, but...
bad for the first try. That worked okay, but it was pretty low power and that's kind of to be expected because we're under volting these motors, which, you know, half the voltage on a motor means quarter the power or something like that. So I thought I'd try the 24 volts again. Uh, I got it all hooked up. It seems to work like a little better. Wow. I think it might work. I guess I gotta make some kind of mount for this second damn battery. This thing's gonna look ridiculous. Rather than dealing with the pain of the ass that is another full-size battery, I went ahead and I fixed the problem with money. So I got two of these smaller deep cycle batteries and those in series, we get our 24 volts. I'm not proud of myself, but man, it works a hell of a lot better. About time we get this driveway done, huh? Take two. We're so dang close, I can taste it. No, sir, you are not. This is where it all went downhill, man. I felt victory in my clutches, but it was clawed away all at once. And while my unwavering commitment to this project um, can be commendable, it can also be borderline psychotic. So I started this day thinking all I had to do was mess with the tracks. They were just slipping a little bit. In the process of that, I burnt out a motor driver and my laptop from some unknown short. I wonder how that happened. That didn't stop me, of course not. I then frantically scoured this whole dang town for any semblance of a motor driver. And I actually found one. There was a super cool dude named Sean who reached out to me and he had a couple motor drivers in his shed, gave them to me for free. What a hero, he saved the project. Got that in, did some minor adjustments, and I was actually able to push this thing through a decent portion of the driveway. Here's that. Was I pleased with that? Of course not! Did you see the driveway? It looked like trash! So I kept pushing, I kept trying new things, all to no avail, more or less. The problem was not any one thing. The problem is that this thing was thrown together in a day and a half before this storm started. I'm calling it now, and we're calling this a failure. This is Snowblower Mark 1, and with winter coming to an end, we have an entire year to design for Snowblower Mark 2. Because I really do think that this is an awesome idea, and it's worth the attention that uh, actual planning will give to it. So, this project's less about the end product and more about the journey, and I really need to learn to accept that a lot sooner. But, you know, that's kind of the mental illness that YouTube gives you, so. Mark II is scheduled for next year, and I'm gonna plow that driveway without leaving the damn couch. Mark my words. Yeah, that's, that's what I got for you this time. Um, if you like what you saw, leave a good old dinger. Think about subscribing, and thank you for watching.